Hey guys, it's Ben. Welcome back to another video on the Daily Pit Stop. Now, this is going to be another pre race app. This is for the Qatar Grand Prix. Now, if you remember correctly, in the previous pre race app for the Las Vegas Grand Prix, I've said that this is pre recorded before the Las Vegas weekend had even started. Now, obviously, because of that, the information that is provided will not take Las Vegas into account because I do not know what would have happened in for that weekend. But of course, uh, when I do a post race, if I do do a post race at least, um, I will sort of reflect and realize that, you know, without talking about Las Vegas, would this have impacted what I've said in this particular video? Just a little bit of an insight, you know, a bit of a reflection on that one. But otherwise, um, this one, as I said, because I like to just still get the video out. Um, it's like pretty much predicting two races in a row without knowing exactly what's happening. That's the idea that I've taken for this one. But yeah, we'll see what happens really with this one. So let's jump right in. And of course, drop a like if you guys are enjoying this series and of course, subscribe for new around here. As I said, I really do apologize for the time constraint and the schedule constraints that I'm having, but I'm trying my best to get videos out. It should get better uh, after mid-December, but obviously the F1 season would have ended. So then you can look forward to the football uh, videos that are probably still going to be posted. So let's yeah, look forward to that. And yes, let's continue. So this was also a sprint race last year, and this year is also a sprint as well. Now, I think how the schedule works is that qualifying will happen on a Friday and then sprint shootout qualifying and sprint shootout happens on a Saturday and then the race happens on a Sunday. So the qualifying positions on Friday will be picked for Sunday's race and then you've obviously got the entire day that's meant for the sprint, uh, the, the shootout as well as the qualifying, which also means that there's only one practice session for the guys to really dig deep into the car, get the setup right quick and fast before they head to park firming conditions. Now, what you see on the screen right now is the starting group for the sprint that happened last year. Now, Piastri had a fantastic sprint that day, the entire day. He was flawless in my opinion and him and Norris up there, top two, couldn't be beaten by Verstappen really. And obviously, um, coming into this weekend, I remember last year, you know, Verstappen just had to score a good amount of points really and he won the title uh, over his own teammate Sergio Perez because, you know, Max Verstappen just won pretty much every single race. The Red Bull car was as dominant as ever for this particular season and it was pretty crazy. Uh, but yeah, I think when Max Verstappen, obviously this happened after qualifying, we should look after that. But just based on the sprint itself, it's very positive for McLaren. I think they really show that they do have one lap pace at least, and I think it was very positive. It's not a very good qualifying session for McLaren, which we'll talk about that later. But based on what I'm seeing, the results, right? See, so Sergio Perez in P8 would have been really, really worrying because, you know, he's trying to take the fight up to Max, or he's trying to fight for something at least, you know? But by being eighth, it's really not putting him in a very good position. And I think that was sort of it where I think a lot of people would believe that as though Max Verstappen were able to secure a couple of points in the sprint, a couple of points in the race, it's pretty much done dust for Max Verstappen. Max Verstappen obviously still has the pace in the car to do something about it. It was only like, I think, less than two tenths away from Oscar Piastri was on pole. So it's not the end of the world, really. I think it's still quite positive, you know, result for, for, for Verstappen being in P3, I think. Maybe he didn't really want to push too much, but otherwise I felt it wasn't a bad, bad uh, position to start for a sprint for Verstappen. But otherwise, I sort of looked down the entire thing. Um, entire thing. Ocon in 10th is not a bad result. Hamilton out in P12. That was a little bit concerning, I think, at that point in time. And Lance Stroll suffering from another Q1 elimination. So the sprint, I think, from the look of the results, because I don't remember what happened last year exactly, except some highlights. It looks okay. I think it's quite reasonably spread out or like a result that you'll probably be expecting. Again, as I said, the Astons, they were dropping back in pace, dropping back in quality a lot. And Fernando was just really trying his best to get do whatever he can, essentially. But that's the best he could have done, I guess, in P9. But that's about it, really, for the, uh, for the, for the sprint qualifying. And as for the actual race itself, I mean, for the actual sprint itself, um, Piastri obviously managed to hold in. A hold, hold his ground there and secure his first win. Yeah, but it's not a proper win, is it? But it's still a win nonetheless, you know, that kind of idea. Um, but really good weekend, I think you would say that's far for Oscar Piastri. Uh, finishing her, her, I think, almost by two seconds. Unfortunately, Lando Norris, yeah, just did have the upper hand over his own teammate. Neither did he have the upper hand over Max Verstappen, uh, Russell was pretty much staying fourth and Hamilton really did climb up and at that point in time you would probably assume that yes Mercedes have a good amount of pace which we'll see qualifying later but yes Mercedes arguably 
had a good amount of pace in that one. I think the shock was probably like from uh, Alexander Albon. He was starting 17th and he somehow managed to climb up to 7th. Now, of course, at the expense of five retirements. First of all, Liam Lawson spinning off. This was when I think Ricardo was still injured. So that's why Liam Lawson stepped into the car. I can't exactly remember how he spun off, but he did. Same with Logan Sargent, spinning off in lap two. I can't remember how that happened, but I do remember the collision between Hulkenberg, Ocon and Sergio Perez. I think that wasn't very, very good for the three of them. Um, the first to obviously leave were, the first to retire were Perez and Ocon. I think Hulkenberg was a little bit collected from that and obviously too much damage man he had to also retire the car unfortunately and because of that that probably would have arguably meant that you know promotion high enough promotions in terms of position for Albon Alonso because had the three finished I think they would have finished in reasonably high positions I think Albon and Alonso would probably finish like 10 11 along those lines but it was a really good race I think for Alexander Albon to finish in P7 for the Williams scoring two points so nothing much to really say uh, but I think the shock would have been Charles Leclerc, really. I mean, he finished in seventh, had a time penalty, which obviously took him out of the points because of track limits, I think. But still, um, yeah, a bit surprising there for, for, for Ferrari, I guess. You know, you expect Charles Leclerc to have a good amount of pace in the car, but maybe in that particular weekend, it wasn't really it for Ferrari. You, again, it's like a straight line speed-ish kind of track with the high speed corners, which arguably isn't Ferrari's strength. Ferrari's strength tends to lie towards the low speed corners, which I think is something that the Vegas Grand Prix has a few. Yes, straight line speed is one thing, but I think low speed corners are quite quite a few in, in, in Vegas, despite it look like a very, you know, squarish kind of track. But I think it could tell a lot of high speed, medium speed corners, which is probably why I think it probably would not suit the Ferrari package very well. But whether or not that's going to be the same this season, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But yeah, I think otherwise, I think the sprint if you're just looking at the top, you know, pretty good for, for the for the McLarens. And obviously with Sergio Perez not being able to finish the race, Max Verstappen scoring seven points, this man, he won the title before the race even happened. So yeah, really good result. Uh, third championship in a row for Max Verstappen at this juncture for this particular race that happened last year. But of course, this year's Qatar Grand Prix has been put towards the end. So it can't really make like a one year ago sort of comparison. But the 2023 Qatar Grand Prix, before the race even happened, Max Verstappen had already won his third championship in a row. Now for the qualifying, which happened on Friday, right? So this was before the sprint shootout, the sprint day. Uh, qualifying did happen before that, and Max Verstappen really lit up the times here. Four tenths the gap when, when he put the car on pole. So you wouldn't really have expected him to sort of replicate the same in the sprint, which somehow he didn't. But that probably shows how good a lap that was um, when he was doing the qualifying session on Friday. But regardless, I think the next shock was that how Russell and Hamilton, P2 and P3, and then you have a Hamilton eliminating, uh, eliminated in Q2. So that would have raised a lot of eyebrows. But really good position start for Mercedes. I think when that happened, it was like, again, Mercedes had really, really good pace. Um, and we could have seen like a really, really exciting race for the both of them. Fernando on P4, which was a really, really good result. But again, despite being able to eke out one lap pace, did I see... As, what we have seen Aston Martin being able to hold on that in the race, I think it's very tentative. I think it would be really, really difficult. Fernando really would have to fight a lot just to keep that position up there if he wanted to. Obviously, Oscar Piastri um, in P6 doesn't really look good for McLaren at that point in time. And Lando Norris didn't even set the time in Q3, uh, which arguably you could argue that it's not a very good result for McLaren. And it's so different to when they secured a 1-2 uh, in the sprint shootout. Uh, qualifying so that was very intriguing to see like the, the little bit of a disparity and of course how that pan out in the race we'll look at that a little bit later but obviously both Alpines in, in Q3 is fantastic do I think do I would I see it again based on the uh, qualifying form and I've said this in the uh, Las Vegas Grand Prix as well it could happen to see both Alpines in Q3 or at least one Alpine in Q3 lean towards Pierre Gasly for this one uh, Valtteri Bottas still in the Alfa Romeo, P9, really, really good. Uh, obviously, Sainz eliminated, Perez eliminated in Q2. Again, just don't really understand, really, I guess, Ferrari. Okay, Ferrari probably understandable, I guess, the pace that they were having. But Sergio Perez, the start of not a very good weekend for him as well. Um, yeah, it's not good, is it? You know, when you're trying to 
take the fight to your teammate and you want to try to keep the championship hooks alive and you decided to get eliminated in Q2 for the actual race itself, which has the most amount of points. I don't know what you're doing, man. I think at that point in time, I think you probably would have really conceded the championship before it's already started at this rate. Yeah, but not a good result for Sergio. But looking below, I think the results are as in the standings or where they've qualified is thereabouts, really. Uh, K-Mag, I mean, the Hassas aren't necessarily the best car or rather not as good as what we see now. Uh, and yeah, the Joe in P20, that's really much it, really nothing much to say about how the starting group really was for the race last year. Right, for the race itself, obviously Verstappen P1 and two McLarens finishing on the podium. Now, had they started slightly higher, do I think they would have taken the fight to max? Yes. The gap between the top three and the next person being uh, George Russell was like another 30 odd seconds. So the, the, it just shows like how much pace the McLaren had in this race. And as I said, had they started higher, they really could have probably fought Verstappen a lot better. Um, but Fernando Alonso really held his own there. Sixth place, Astaban able to have a seventh place. Obviously, Pierre Gasly, I think he had a little bit of a time penalty. Um, he finished 10th, I think, in that race, but because of the time penalties for the senior track limits, many was outside the points. Perez actually didn't even finish in the points. For that race, it shows it was a disappointing weekend for Sergio. But because of penalties for Stroll as well, and I think Alex Albon as well, whatever it is, penalties were dish dished out, essentially. A lot of the drivers, they couldn't really keep the car on track, and it was such a physically demanding race for them. Um, like Logan Sargent, he retired because he was really struggling in the car. I think Ocon vomited a couple of times as well. Still managed to finish P7. So it's crazy. It was a really demand, physically demanding race with the guys. Uh, Carlos Sainz, I remember he didn't start the race because of a fuel leak that was in the car. Hamilton, the very famous collision between him and Russell. Hamilton, I think, tried to get on the outside off turn one. Russell was like in between Verstappen and Hamilton. Didn't really have a lot of room. Bumped into Hamilton, his own teammate. Hamilton spun. Hamilton had the collision. Hamilton, unfortunately, had to retire from the race. So I think at that point in time, I felt like Hamilton was a little bit too eager to get forward. I think he could have tried to stay behind a little bit and continue to fight from there. As I said, considering that the Mercedes had a really good amount of pace that weekend, I think Hamilton could have been a little bit more patient for that. But that was last this incident. It obviously had happened. But yeah, George Russell, P4, I think is a reasonable result for him. I think McLaren just had too much pace. I think arguably they were the fastest car. Uh, I think Verstappen wouldn't have an answer for them if, again, they started higher. That would have been the case. But uh, good race. But again, the physical demands of this particular Grand Prix, I think it should still be a concern for the drivers coming into this one. That's why they have actually decided to push the race towards the end of the season where it's arguably a little bit colder just to combat, you know, such a physically demanding race. But we'll see what happens this weekend. But now uh, let's head into some of my predictions as to see how I think this weekend will pan out. Right, so for the predictions, uh, what a drive, I think. Um, a bit of, like, I'd say, recency bias because it's, I think it's going to be really hard to tell. But considering how McLaren have had a really, really good car last year, I think it's probably going to be the same again this year um, because they really have the best car on the grid, arguably. And I think they would keep that sort of, like, package, I guess, for this particular Grand Prix. Uh, between him and Norris, because my prediction is that Lando would have really not won the title by this Grand Prix. So I'm going to actually put Piastri to have a really, really good driver. I think he's probably going to emulate what he's done last year. I think it's the start of a Piastri where it's it's really good. I think it's really positive. Um, obviously, I think so. in this late couple of races, he's not been the most consistent or not delivering the best results possible, like compared to at the start of the season when I felt like Piastri was doing slightly better, or at least in the middle of the season where Piastri was a lot better. Uh, but we could see a Piastri that could do very well again. I think if I were to say who's going to win this Grand Prix, I think Piastri might stand a really, really good chance for this one if the car and if he's able to have a really good form coming into this race. And then as for God Awful Drive, I've actually put Lewis Hamilton. Now, not because he had a collision last year, but because of the fact that he's not been at ease with the car. Now, if he has a really, really good car in Las Vegas, or at least a car that is comfortable in driving, and again, the setup is at his side for this Qatar Grand Prix, then he would not be the worst driver in my opinion, unless again, a collision happens or something else happens. But just based on what I've seen from Lewis Hamilton towards the end of the season, it just shows that I just don't think he's able to do it. And I think he's probably going to not really have a very positive drive. 
and he, I could, in my opinion at least, I see him not having a good weekend again. It's, I think, maybe going to emulate Brazil vibes, or it might even be worse. But yeah, I think his second last race at Mercedes, I don't think it's a really good end to his Mercedes career, but I just feel that because he's not been at one with the car most of the time this season, I think he's not going to have a very good drive for this one. As for team of the race, I think it's going to be McLaren. I think this is like one of the races where they really need to look at it. Second last race of the season, it's fine to have lost the Drivers' Championship if, let's say, they do lose that. But to really focus on the constructors, because when for the, for the previous video, I said that if, you know, Ferrari, I, I predicted Ferrari to have a very good race, and I think the gap between them and McLaren will close. This is the sort of race where they need to do it the other way around, which I think because it's not the track's probably not going to suit Ferrari massively, and I feel like it's going to suit McLaren a lot. And they really have to take that to the advantage, capitalize and score maximum points, just to ensure that, you know, they're able to have a good enough gap. They're coming into the race in Abu Dhabi. They don't really need to do too much to prevent an upset with regards to the constructors. But in my opinion, I think McLaren are going to do really well. I think this is where they're going to try their best to cement as much as possible for their constructors championship. And of course, that's the team. I think I'm going to go with a really safe option here. I'm going to say kick Salva. Now, I, do I think Valtteri Bottas is going to score another point? A score a point even in this race? I don't think so. But if he does, they're going to be team of the race for me for the post race for this particular Grand Prix. Right, so now looking at the teams again. So first of all, starting with Alpine. I think Q3 is possible. I think, again, looking at recent performances and last year's one as well, it is possible. Whether or not they're going to continue to be competitive, I'm not exactly too sure. Probably, I think again, competitive advantage, them, Racing Bulls and Haas, they still have the upper hand, arguably, in my opinion at least. But again, things could swing anyway. Um, it's going to be, I think, a land of ambiguity for Alpine. They could do well, they might not be able to do well. And again, it also really is dependent on what happens in Las Vegas. But just for this race alone, I think they're going to be okay. Would they score points? I think it would be a challenge. They might score one, might score two, might score none. I think they're just going to have to try their best really for this one. Obviously with the sprint, there will be some opportunities as well for them to risk a little bit for the sprint. They might do that. Um, but yeah, it will be interesting for Alpine. I think I'm interested to see how both drivers do perform. Obviously I still have more confidence in Pierre Gasly than Esteban Ocon, but we will see what happens with the, with, with the both drivers. But I think they, again, could, could and should be cautiously optimistic and also providing they had a decent, reasonably decent Las Vegas Grand Prix. As though the form hasn't dipped from then, they should be okay. Now for Aston Martin, I don't know, really. Um, again, a little bit of no man's land. I don't have the confidence in this team. I think it's going to be a struggle for them in general. Um, I don't really know what to say, really. It's, it's difficult, isn't it? Like, I, don't, I, don't, I just don't see them scoring many points anymore towards the tail end of the season. And unless somehow Fernando Alonso can somehow light the car up or in whatever way possible, I just don't think they're really not going to threaten anyone up and I don't think they're going to receive any threat from below as well. So it just could be another race where they're just there to exist. Could it just be another race where they're just there to do whatever they can, really? Um, I don't think they will be surprising. I think no points maybe even this weekend. One of the worst teams in my opinion again, probably this weekend. And yeah, I just don't think they're going to do well. So Aston Martin, they might be a curveball team, they might be a wild card, but otherwise, safe to say, I don't think it's going to be another positive weekend for them. Now Ferrari, obviously, um, I think this track, in my opinion, has a lot of high speed, medium speed corners, not many low speed corners, not really suited to the package. I think it's going to be a struggle for them. It's going to be like a switch, I think, from Las Vegas, where I think Las Vegas is going to be a really positive weekend for them, but fortunately for this one, it might not be very positive. I think if they do get like a 5th and 6th finish in the race, sprint as well, it's a good race for Ferrari. I think it's going to be a very, very good race. Uh, but I mean, you never know what might happen, right? They might just suddenly be able to win the race uh, this weekend. Uh, but yeah, I think realistically, because I think the package is probably not on their, on, the, on their side, I think it's going to be an okay weekend for them. Um, yeah, I just don't think that they're going to do crazily good this weekend i think it's like one of those weekends where they are consistent enough to score a good amount of points and just try to keep the fight to mclaren i think that's pretty much i think the direction that i would see that ferrari would take for this weekend and then as for Haas, i think probably could be okay but whether or not they're going to score points i'm not exactly too sure either it would be a very interesting one um 
maybe maybe they might score a point or two would that be enough to fight for sixth i'm not too sure i think for for Haas, i think the best bet is arguably in the las vegas grand prix um if they weren't able to score points in that one i think the chance of them scoring points in this one in abu dhabi is going to be even slimmer that's my take on it um but obviously again i just have to say that Haas have had a really good season you know and i think that they should be really happy with what they've what they've had so far this season or at least in the entirety of this season as i said because the alpine's result may have not put them in a very good position like they probably wouldn't want to be seven they would have wanted to be six i still think they can still try to fight for it uh will not be easy of course but they could do well so we'll see what happens with Haas. again very hard to tell but i'm more positive about Haas getting a result than aston martin getting a result so <laughs> that's one thing for sure at least on my eye well, at least this is what i feel now kicks over again unless somehow the car becomes a rocket ship no i just don't think they're gonna do well again it's very unfortunate at this point you'd really just have to wrap up the season put the season behind them the score zero points for the entirety of the season i think it's been a while since we've seen that maybe two years ago two seasons ago that we've seen a zero point team i'm actually not too sure about that we'll check on that when i have the time but yeah i just don't think it could do well to be honest and uh i think it's going to show again this weekend i think this is also why i put them as the worst team i think other teams like they're probably expected to perform to a certain level and that's about it but kicksalbo are just not going to be showing up pretty much nothing much to say again it, i feel like repeating myself again from las vegas but unless things change in las vegas unless las vegas have really showed something I just don't think they're going to do anything again this weekend or even if Las Vegas has some positives I don't think it's going to happen here as well in Qatar so again I'm unfortunately quite pessimistic about them but I think what they what what's the best the best that can happen for them now is just to wrap up the season and uh, get the new drivers in Hulkenberg and Bortoletto in next season hopefully they're able to change something up next season but otherwise yeah it's just Kicksalba the story of Kicksalba this season is unfortunately not good and I think they're going to have a horrid weekend. Now for McLaren, um, as I said, it should be a very good weekend for them on paper. I think the package that they have should see them perform reasonably well this weekend. Or rather, the best team for the weekend. I've predicted Piastri to win. I predict Norris to do really well despite losing the championship. And I think that's when they can obviously overtake the Sappen in regards for the, for the race and the sprint itself. Um... But we'll see what happens with McLaren. Um, I think this is, as I said, this is the race where they really have to consolidate their championship, their constructors' championship status, their standings at least. So it will be very interesting to see what's going to happen for this race for them. But again, I think the confidence should be high for them. I think maybe Las Vegas probably wasn't going to be a very good weekend for them, but they got to come this weekend thinking that they stand a pretty good chance. And I think it's crunch time now when you're trying to fight for the constructors. And as I said, had Ferrari closed that gap, in Las Vegas, they really have to step up for this one and try to extend that gap again and try to give themselves some breathing room ahead of Ferrari heading into the final race at Abu Dhabi. Now for Mercedes, uh, I don't think they're going to have the same set of results that they've had last season or at least the package to score really good points. And I think, as I say, because I don't think Hamilton is that one with the car still, I think that's still going to be a little bit of a trouble for the Mercedes. Um, I think Russell's probably going to do well. I think... Mercedes should be expecting like a top eight finish maybe coming to this race. I think this is something that an expectation that it could bring in. I think any better than that, I think is really good for them because I think you've got the McLarens probably going to be up there, the Sapper probably going to be up there, and you've got the Ferraris. I think they still have the upper hand over Mercedes. So because of that, and maybe got a fluke result or two that could see like maybe the Alpine scoring points or maybe someone else scoring points, maybe Sergio Perez might be able to score some good points in this race. And I think that's when you're probably going to see Mercedes sort of fall back a little bit. So I think top eight is probably where Mercedes will probably finish in the race and the sprint. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit challenging race for, for Mercedes. But ultimately, they're not really fighting for anything. As I said, apart from the two drivers fighting, see who finishes higher in the standings. There's nothing much really to fight for Ferrari. So, uh, sorry, for Mercedes. So, yeah, uh, I think Mercedes are going to be okay. I think they just need to score points. They don't retire from the race, don't have collisions, and they should be okay. I think heading to the race at the Abu Dhabi, just get the season over and done with and look forward to the next season. I think that's something that Mercedes can obviously look forward to.
As for Racing Bulls, not too sure. I mean, they could sneak into Q3 again. Uh, but do I think they have the race pace to score points? Probably. They might be able to score a point or two, but I think that's the maximum. Again, unless something crazy happens, I just don't think they have the package to see their drivers perform reasonably well. So that's my take on it. Could be wrong, but nothing much to really say really about racing balls. I mean, again, the fight for the sixth place, you just have to continue to try to fight. I think this is like a motivation, a motivating factor for the team. But I think realistically, I'm not too sure if they have the pace to take it up there. But you never know. I think Las Vegas might have an answer coming into this one. But yeah, I think Racing Bulls is going to be okay, but maybe not fantastic. So I don't know where they will finish. I think this is another wild card, to be honest. But I think to be safe, maybe they might just finish outside the points. But if they're able to finish in the points, it's very positive for them. So that's something you can probably try to look forward to. And who knows, take the fight down to the to, down to the wire, I guess, in Abu Dhabi as well. Now, Red Bull, um, I think if you look from a constructor's perspective, they might have to concede top two, to be honest. And I think third is probably the best way they will finish this year. As I said, uh, Verstappen should have won the championship by now, unless a DNF has happened in the last race or something crazy has happened. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I think Sergio Perez might score a point or two in this race, but I don't think it's going to help. Really, I think Verstappen will probably finish in the podium or at least like top four, maybe. Uh, do I think Verstappen will win the race? Not exactly. I don't see him winning this race, but again, you never know. Maybe the, the car is decided to light up again for Verstappen. But otherwise, I think it's going to be a, an average race, I think, for Red Bull with not too much expectations. And yeah, that, that, that's pretty much it really for them. Um, but yeah, we'll see what happens with, with both, both drivers. Obviously, I think Verstappen will do much better than Perez. But I don't think it's going to be a stellar weekend for the Red Bulls. I think when Verstappen, if he had won his fourth championship at Vegas, I think we've come to this weekend a lot more relaxed with not too much in mind. And I think Red Bull are pretty much ready to concede the constructors, in my opinion, unless, again, unless things somehow swing back in their favour and so our Paris decides to step up. Otherwise, I think third place is pretty much theirs. I just don't think they will take the fight to Ferrari and McLaren because... Both other teams have two drivers really scoring consistent points to get them up there, but it's always been pretty much Verstappen really. Paris just hasn't been doing well the entirety of the season. Again, the points are showing, the results are showing. So I don't know what Red Bull are thinking, but I think if you ask me, I think they're probably moving towards conceding the Constructors' Championship. But again, how the weekend's going to pan out for them, I think it's going to be okay for Verstappen. Paris, I really don't know. I think it's not going to be a good weekend for him again. And it's going to be unfortunate for Perez. Even towards the end of the season, he's still not able to find any sort of positivity. Um, yeah, I think he's, he's quite in trouble, to be honest. But there's nothing much, I guess, we can do but to just watch, uh, I guess, a lot of things unfold for this weekend too, for Perez. And of course, to wrap things up with Williams, um, might score a point or two. Might. But I don't know. I think, again, because they don't really have much to fight for, I guess, in the championship unless they... Again, adopt another fluke result. Otherwise, I think it's going to be okay. I think I, I can probably see them reaching Q3. Again, one lap pace, I think it's probably up there. I think the race pace is going to be a little bit questionable for them. They can try, but I don't think it's going to be really easy. But they can try. Um, yeah, but otherwise, I think what's the best result for them is probably like, again, just outside the point sort of finish. Competitive outlook for them but unfortunately no points to bring home i think that's the direction that probably is going to happen i think as i said i think they stand a better chance to score points in vegas than this one but i could be wrong maybe you score points in both so we'll see how happens with the williams but this is my take on this team they've done pretty well this season in my opinion i think james vows have done reasonably well for them unfortunately the performances are not as good as last season but that doesn't mean like they've had a bad season overall um i think I feel, I don't I don't feel bad for saying this, but like had Sargent been replaced at the start of the season and they've had Colo Pinto throughout the entirety of the season, I think they, Williams probably could have scored a lot more points. I think considering how Colo Pinto has been performing, Colo Pinto has been really really good. So despite having a few crashes here and there, I mean Brazil again, you know the crashes are normal to happen uh, in these sort of conditions. 
But ultimately, I felt like Colo Pinto has been pretty consistent. And because of that, I think there are a lot of positives to take away for Williams, really, and to see how Colo Pinto has been performing. Again, Colo Pinto's future, as I've talked about in the Bortoletto announcement video, don't really know where he's going. But otherwise, I think, you know, had Colo Pinto been at the team since the start of the season, I think Williams would have had a lot more opportunity to score points or at least lesser, fewer shuns uh, from the drivers that meant that that money could have been allocated to upgrading the car even more. So, but again, that, that, that's a lot of ifs. Um, who knows, maybe Colo Pinto would have crashed out a lot more. I wouldn't know. But I think this race alone, I think it's going to be okay for the Williams team. It's just not going to be super positive. And uh, yeah, I think that, but I think they're going to be competitive. So they can try their best to fight. And uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to be a bad weekend for them. It's just that it's not going to be a stellar weekend for them, in my opinion, at least probability wise. So with that being said, guys, thank you very, very much for watching. As I said, this video is pre-recorded before the Las Vegas Grand Prix had even started, before the weekend had even begun. So again, I cannot tell you what has happened in that race, but I will try to cover that in the post race itself if the video does come out. But with that being said, guys, uh, drop a like on the video. If you guys have enjoyed, subscribe if you're new around here. Please get discussing in the comments down below what you think the race is going to pan out. If you disagree with what I have to say about certain things, of course, I said the knowledge is a little bit limited for this particular video. But yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Until then, goodbye.